Welcome to VM Blogs Mega Series 2022. And today we have the pleasure of having Arrest Lesuk, who is the Solutions Engineer at Starwind. Welcome. Hi, nice to meet you. Now, maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about the company and you know what does your company look like moving into 2023? Yeah, definitely. Well, Starwind actually has made its way as a storage virtualization pioneer with its software-only product that is now known as Starwind Virtual Send. Basically, a software-defined storage solution that is aimed at delivering storage high availability for applications and services. Now, of course, throughout the years, we have significantly expanded our product portfolio with the hardware appliances, such as our flagship hyperconverged appliance, dedicated storage appliance, and the newly released all NVMe backup appliance. Plus, also, we added a variety of paid and free software products. And, of course, we are mainly focused on building highly available IT infrastructures for various companies in different industries all over the globe. With the look of 2022 and further, I would say that our primary focus is developing new technologies such as NVMe over fabrics, basically deliver, delivering the performance for your VMs and applications, and of course, continuing improving our existing products and continue delivering uptime for applications and services of our customers. Now, we're, we're hearing more and more about cloud uh, being categorized as public, private, hybrid, or multi-cloud. How do you explain it or differentiate it to people? Mm. So regarding public cloud, in simple words and from the point of view of a company that is specialized in the uptime delivery, public cloud is where you have a very limited or no control of the instruments that ensure system uptime and also quality of services. Basically, you rely on the public cloud provider. It's more than anything else, it's a matter of trust. Whether you can build the on-premises infrastructure better, that's another question. In some cases, maybe yes. In some cases, it might be better to rely on the public cloud provider. Now, for the private cloud, it's the another term for the classical on-premises, hardware-based infrastructure. And here is everything, again, quite simple. You get maximum control over the instruments to ensure system uptime and basically to tailor and shape it as per your precise requirements and business needs. Now, a hybrid cloud would be in the middle. So to say it in the other way, it combines probably the best of both worlds. While, for example, instead of scaling your existing infrastructure with additional hardware, you can just move some of the workloads to cloud. That was maintaining the on-premises benefits plus getting the flexibility of public cloud. As to the multi-cloud, uh, that's a bit controversial approach, I would say. Uh, from my point of view, it's mostly a marketing concept that is another way to spend more money with no clear benefits for a business. As you diversify costs, namely operational expenses between different public cloud vendors with different pricing. And where do you see the industry headed in the next couple of years? You know, what should organizations be thinking about regarding, regarding the cloud? Mm. Well, public cloud has already been here for quite a long time. And a lot of companies already managed to move either part of their workloads or entire workloads to the cloud. Now, very important here is to understand the use case and to have a good understanding of pricing and functionality of the public cloud. If you do it spontaneously, just let's migrate all our workload or our physical infrastructure to cloud does not usually end up very good. But with the proper approach, that's very possible and that might be a very good way. Overall, suddenly, public cloud will be a big part of the game, but we would say that hybrid cloud is what would be developing in the in the fastest pace, not the 
public cloud or either on premises, it will be a mix, basically a hybrid cloud. Now you've talked a lot about public versus private. Um, where do you stand on the public versus private cloud debate? And if you had a preference, uh, what are some of the top benefits that you see over selecting one over the other? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there is indeed such a debate and that's what we hear very often, but honestly, putting just private cloud versus public cloud is quite a dangerous and harmful approach. Instead, you should always derive from your company needs and from your business goals or from the issues you need to fix. Basically, what you need is a good IT consultant or expertise that will tell you how can you optimize the existing business processes, be it public cloud or private cloud. For example, if you have a lot of aging hardware, right, multiple servers, but your workload is never even close reaching 50% of the utilization, instead of renewing that all, you might just very well move part of the workloads to cloud and refresh the hardware with a compact two-node highly available cluster for most of the mission-critical workloads. Now, private cloud or on-premises infrastructure will give you performance for your most critical VMs and applications and better control. Public cloud, on the other hand, will give you better flexibility and scaling. For example, if you are looking to roll out applications or test them on the market in a fast way, definitely deploying several public cloud instances and delivering them to the market will be much faster than investing and building the hardware-based infrastructure. So most likely, that's when we need to consider our real goals and what business needs. So basically, private cloud and public cloud should be just viewed as instruments for achieving one's goals. One or another or a combination can be better in every specific use case. Now, we've been talking a lot about cloud. If we bring things back down to earth uh, and we look at virtual desktop infrastructure, do you think that VDI is still important or have uh, or have we moved on from that? It is. It definitely is as it was, if not even more important. Now, especially after the COVID outbreak, when the users and employees were moved into the remote operation, VDI is becoming more and more important, both in the on-premises and in the cloud, because you can easily deploy desktop as a service in cloud. So it's all the matter of your needs. The idea here is quite simple. You might not need to invest in a powerful and costly laptops for every or for each of your worker. And instead, if your infrastructure allows, you can build a powerful VDI solution that can be served for multiple workloads. And it also provides a greater control, a more granular control of the instances or of the desktops themselves, of what the workers are actually doing in them from the company's point of view. So yeah, definitely it's very important and is developing both in public cloud and on-premises environments. Now, what would you say is the biggest challenges that businesses are facing today in regards to virtualization and cloud computing? Uh, well, trying to separate marketing messages from real company needs. Now, internet is a great thing as long as it contains proper and true information. Now, there are multiple articles over the web, top five reasons why you should pick public cloud or top three reasons why on-premises is better. And one's journey to the world of virtualization or to public cloud should not start from these articles. Instead, you should always first consider your business needs. What can we improve? How can we improve it? And what instruments are at our disposal? And with that being said, now, the biggest actually problem is the lack of understanding of how IT and IT infrastructure is important for a company. Now, maybe it's not, and maybe if a server fails or any other part of your equipment fails or a cloud instance fails, you even won't notice it in terms of your business operations, sales, revenue, and services delivery. Maybe not, but in most of the cases, it is very noticeable, especially in modern days where we have businesses running 24-7, 365. So the most crucial thing here is for the leadership of the company to have at least 
an overall broad understanding of how much you rely on your IT infrastructure and on your IT services. From that, it opens you new perspectives and way of improving your infrastructure, be it either on-premises or cloud, and as a result, grow and improve your business further. Now we're we're talking a lot about you know virtualization, cloud, end user computing. Where does the Starwind solution fit in that ecosystem? Mm. Now, Starwind actually provides a wide variety of solutions. For example, our flag, flagship hyper converged appliance, which is designed to deliver storage high availability and as a result, uptime for our customers' VMs and applications. Same goes for dedicated storage appliances and for our all NVMe backup appliance that is designed to provide you with the maximum speed for the backups and restores. So again, while these are traditionally on-premises, our HCA can be combined with public cloud. Just as well, our Star and Virtual Sand software that is designed for storage high availability can work to replicate storage, not just between two physical servers, but for example, between two public cloud instances in different availability zones. So to be fair, it's both in the on-premises and in the public cloud space. But the main goal, of course, of our solutions is to ensure uptime and services delivery for our customers. And mainly we are working in the storage virtualization and sharing sphere with uptime as one of our crucial goals to achieve. And what would you say are the top three benefits uh, to businesses that choose to implement Starwind? Well, number one benefit would be support. With our solutions, especially hardware-based solutions, we include what we call proactive premium support, which is basically our analytical and reporting system operating 24-7, 365. Now, this allows us to monitor for the potential issues by analyzing a set of patterns and basically try to resolve them before they occur. But even if the issue occurs, we are the ones basically acting as a single support umbrella for all of the components of the hardware-based appliance. So in any case, even if the issue occurs, you do not need to contact multiple vendors. We'll be the, one, the ones covering the issue be it the hardware or the software component or the hypervisor and also involving third-party vendors in, if required. And this drastically reduces the amount of time and efforts that was typically spent on infrastructure support. Not saying, not to mention about the uptime you get for the applications and services you are running. Uh, the second thing is the fact that our hardware solutions are tailored to our specific customers' needs. So while we definitely have a range of default models in hyperconverged appliance, storage appliance, or backup appliance, what we always try to do is take even the slightest details of information and peculiarities into the account and provide our customers with a tailored solution to their precise needs without under-provisioning and without over-provision of the resources. So basically you get the highest price per performance and per TP ratio you can get. And the final benefit, although not the last, right, just one of the majors, I would say, uh, again, it's the uptime because that's what we are aimed, that's the primary goal of our company to ensure uptime for your applications and services and make sure that your business is up and running and driving huge profit in case of one of the service or the components fails. Now, earlier in the conversation you started out, you mentioned where Starwind is headed into 2023. Can you uh, come back and talk a little bit about the new technologies that your company has been working on recently? Yeah, sure. Now, um, as I mentioned, indeed, we are mostly focused on NVMe, right? So NVMe is a new storage standard that is already here, maybe not that widely used, but we are working on making what 
for someone may seem as a day of tomorrow, the current reality. So our main focus is to deliver the performance that NVMe has to your applications and VMs and services over the network. Now that has already been done partially with our NVMe over fabrics target and initiator. Now we are also working on delivering this in the highly available format. So not just to share NVMe over network with maximum performance, but also to make it highly available. And the other new technology, basically, the solution we are working on is uh, in joint effort with Intel. So I'm not going to cover a lot of technical details on this, but there is a typical problem. You can rarely, or to say more, never get good density and VME performance at affordable cost. So you cannot match all three in a single solution. Now, that's basically what we are doing and what we are planning to design and implement in the nearest future. Basically, imagine you can have two petabytes of high-performing NVMe storage in a two-unit server form factor, still keeping costs down. So that's, I would say, our most important focus currently. Well, great. Well, lastly, I just wanted to wrap up by saying, where can people go if they want to find out more information about Starwind and some of the things that you've talked about today? They can definitely go to our Starwind website where we have all the web papers and information on our products, also the knowledge base and Starwind blog, and of course, to the VM blog if they want to learn more about not just Starwind, but other marketing and current and developing technologies. Well, thank you for being part of our mega series today. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you guys in the future. Thank you as well. Wish you all the best. All right. Take care.